All right, let's just get right into it. Will we ever be able to zip between the stars like in the movies, you know, faster than light travel? Or is it just a total fantasy, something that physics says is just impossible? Well, that's exactly the question we're digging into today. I love this quote from physicist Sabine Hassenfelder. She basically says, I believe there's intelligent life on other planets, and the most plausible reason why they haven't contacted us is that we're too boring. Ouch. And what makes us so boring? Well, maybe it's because, cosmically speaking, we're stuck in the slow lane. We haven't even cracked the ultimate speed limit. But wait a second. Isn't that just a settled fact? I mean, we've all been told that. Einstein proved it. End of story. You just can't go faster than light. But what if that fact we all know isn't quite as solid as we think? What if it's built on some pretty shaky ground? Okay, let's really get into it. All right, first up, the infinite energy problem. This is the big one, the most famous argument against FTL travel. It comes straight from Einstein's special relativity, and honestly, it seems totally airtight. And it all boils down to one really, really weird thing about light. So think about this. Normally, speeds just add up, right? You're on a train going 200 kilometers an hour. You spray a water hose forward, and that water is now going a little over 200 kilometers an hour. Makes sense. But light, light just plays by different rules. If you're on that same train and you shine a laser pointer, the light doesn't speed up at all. It just keeps going at the speed of light. It's like the universe has this one absolute unbreakable speed limit, no matter what you do. And here's where it gets truly bizarre. The consequence of this is, well, mind-bending. Let's say you built a spaceship that could go at 99% of the speed of light, and you're chasing a laser beam. You'd think you're almost keeping up with it, right? That it's just barely pulling away? Nope. From your point of view, that beam of light is still speeding away from you at the full, complete speed of light. It's impossible. You can never, ever catch it. And that, right there, leads us to the big problem. The infinite energy problem. The math is pretty clear on this one. To push something that has mass, like you or a spaceship, closer and closer to light speed, the amount of energy you need just goes through the roof. It skyrockets. And to actually hit the speed of light, you would need an infinite amount of energy. So, there you have it. Impossible. Case closed, or is it? Well, maybe not. Okay, so it turns out that whole infinite energy argument has a loophole, a big one. And the clue, the counterexample, comes from the universe itself, way back at the dawn of time. But to get what happened, we need to ask a more fundamental question first. What even is mass? Where does it come from? So where does mass come from? Well, for the fundamental building blocks of you and me, things like electrons and quarks, it's not something they're just born with. They get it by interacting with something called the Higgs field. You can think of this field like a kind of cosmic syrup or molasses that fills all of space. And as particles move through it, they feel a drag. And that drag is what we experience as mass. But here's the kicker. It wasn't always like this. Let's walk through this. Right after the Big Bang, the universe was unbelievably hot. And in that heat, the Higgs field was kind of like water vapor. It was there, but particles could just zip right through it. They didn't have any mass. And because they were massless, every single one of them moved at the speed of light. But then, as the universe expanded and cooled, something amazing happened. The Higgs field went through a phase transition. It condensed, just like water vapor turning into morning dew. And suddenly, particles couldn't just zip through anymore. They started to get bogged down to interact with this new, condensed field. They gained mass, and they slowed down. So think about what just happened there. The universe took particles that were already moving at the speed of light, and it slowed them down. It crossed the light speed barrier in reverse. And the energy that was released in that process, it was finite. It had to be finite. If it had taken infinite energy, well, none of this would exist. We wouldn't be here to talk about it. This is huge. This one event from the early universe shows us that the so-called infinite energy barrier isn't some absolute unbreakable law of nature. The universe itself broke it. Now, it did it in reverse, going from light speed to slower than light, but it still shows the transition is possible. It proves that the whole infinite energy argument, well, it's just not quite right. 
Okay, so maybe the energy problem isn't the brick wall we thought it was. But there's another big one. This one might be even more famous, and it's all about paradoxes. It's the argument that if you could travel faster than light, you could also travel in time, and that would just completely break, well, everything. Here's the basic idea. According to special relativity, there's no such thing as now for the entire universe. What you see happening at the same time is totally dependent on how you're moving. And if something is moving faster than light, this gets really weird. For some people moving really fast, the order of events for that FTL object would literally seem to happen backwards. Let's use a classic example to make this clear. Imagine Alice is just standing on Earth, watching a faster-than-light spaceship go by. On that ship, someone drops an egg. Alice sees the egg drop, and then a moment later, she sees it smash on the floor. Cause, then effect. Simple. But now let's say Bob flies by in his own ship at, say, 90% the speed of light. From his point of view, he would see the egg smash on the ground before he sees it get dropped. The effect happens before the cause. The timeline is completely backwards. And you might be thinking, okay, so what? That's just a weird optical illusion for Bob, right? But the argument is that it's not just a perception. If this is true, it means you could use these FTL signals to send messages back into your own past. You could create a closed time-like loop. You know, the classic grandfather paradox. You could send a message back in time telling yourself not to build the time machine, that kind of causality-breaking trouble. But just like the energy problem, this time travel argument has a huge flaw. It only works if you're living in the world of special relativity. And what kind of world is that? It's a universe that's totally empty. And that's not our universe, is it? To describe the real universe, our universe, we need Einstein's other theory, general relativity. Our universe is filled with stuff. Trillions of galaxies, gas, dust, radiation. And all of that matter, when you average it all out, actually creates a sort of universal standard of rest, a preferred reference frame for the whole cosmos. Physicists call this the co-moving frame. It's basically the reference frame that's moving along with the overall flow of the universe as it expands. What this does is give us something that special relativity lacks, a universal definition of forward in time. It's a cosmic standard that everyone, no matter how they're moving, can agree on. And here's the elegant solution to the whole time travel paradox. What if the laws of physics say you can only go faster than light forward in time, according to this universal co-moving frame? If that's the rule, then no paradoxes. You can never send a message to your past. Bob's weird view of the egg smashing first? It just becomes a strange visual effect, like a mirage. It's not a real violation of cause and effect. So let's take a step back. The two biggest arguments against faster than light travel, the infinite energy thing and the time travel paradox, they both seem to have some pretty serious loopholes. But there's an even bigger, more fundamental reason to question this impossible label. And that's the simple fact that we know we don't have all the answers yet. The physics rulebook isn't finished. I mean, physicists are the first to tell you this. We know our best current theory of space-time, general relativity, can't be the final word. Why? Because when you get down to the super tiny scales of quantum mechanics, the math just breaks. It doesn't work with quantum theory. The two biggest pillars of modern physics don't talk to each other properly. So whatever the final answer is about how space-time and causality really work, it's almost certainly going to come from a new unified theory, something that we call quantum gravity. And when we finally figure that out, who knows? That new theory could completely rewrite the rules of what we think is possible. So what's the big takeaway here? It's that the arguments against faster than light travel, the ones that seem so definite, are actually on some really shaky ground. The whole infinite energy problem the universe itself gives us a counterexample. The time travel paradox, it kind of falls apart once you remember we live in a real universe, not an empty one. The case for impossible just isn't as airtight as most of us thought. Now, does this mean we're going to have warp drives next week? No, of course not. But it does mean that saying FTL is impossible forever is, well, it's a bit premature, isn't it? We're basing that on a rule book that we know is incomplete. 
And that leaves us with a really exciting question to think about. If these limits we thought were so absolute are actually up for debate, what else is out there that we think is impossible today, but might not be tomorrow? 